Today, our council honors Earth Day in the best manner possible. We are not here to simply talk about or reaffirm our commitment to a greener planet in the abstract. Instead, we are here to make meaningful progress through our votes on these nine measures that are designed to help us reduce our consumption of energy and to use more clean, renewable energy. We may not be able to single-handedly solve the looming disaster that climate change represents, but that doesn't mean our county should not do what it can. If we as a county do what we can, and if other metropolitan areas around the country do the same, then we may be able to bypass the dysfunction in our Congress that prevents our country from doing what it must. And in the process, we will create a better quality of life for our community and new economic opportunities for green businesses and innovation. If there were any doubt about the urgency to take strong action, a quick review of the latest report issued just weeks ago from the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change should be convincing. As one writer reported, and I quote, a United Nations report raised the threat of climate change to a whole new level, warning of sweeping consequences to life and livelihood. The report from the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change concluded that climate change has, was already having effects in real time melting sea ice and thawing permafrost in the Arctic, killing off coral reefs in the oceans, and leading to heat waves, heavy rains, and mega disasters. And the worst was yet to come. Climate change posed a threat to global food stocks and to human security, the blockbuster report said. Nobody on this planet is going to be untouched by the impacts of climate change, said the co-chair of the IPCC. Yet as dire as this report may be, there is still hope. Hope because the cost of renewables such as solar have dropped significantly and will continue to drop, making it more and more competitive with coal-fired generation. And coal-fired generation typically represents half of the electricity a Pepco customer gets. And energy efficiency continues to be a very cost-effective option, particularly when combined with low-cost financing. We can do this. Our county must do this. Because as the co-chair of the UN report observed, quote, what we cannot afford is to waste another decade. Here is something else we can't afford to do. Pit the environment against the economy. It is a false choice. Listen to what Paul Krugman wrote in a piece for the New York Times only a few days ago. Quote, free market advocates seem to experience a peculiar loss of faith whenever the subject of the environment comes up. They normally trumpet their belief that the magic of the market can surmount, surmount all obstacles, that the private sector's flexibility and talent for innovation can easily cope with limiting factors like scarcity of land or minerals, but suggest the possibility of market-friendly environmental measures, and they suddenly assert that the private sector would be unable to cope and that the cost would be immense. No. Bottom line, we can have a strong economy and still take care of our planet. Point the private sector in the direction they need to go, and through its ingenuity and entrepreneurialism, it will produce for us. It will produce good green jobs for our underemployed tradesmen. It will put people back to work retrofitting homes and commercial buildings, and it will employ more people putting solar on rooftops. That is what these measures strive to do. They are not the end of the world, but they are a good start and a good continuation of what our council has in the past done. Let me make sure people appreciate that before I came on the council, Councilmember Leventhal and Councilmember Florine were champions of this very issue. And councils since have carried that ball forward. The fact that every one of these measures had the support of a majority of the colleagues speaks to this council's commitment to the environment. So ladies and gentlemen, I repeat, we are honoring Earth Day in the best possible way. Let me also thank the council president. The council president made sure that nine of the 11 measures that have come out of our committee would be before us today on Earth Day. And the council president appropriately has expressed concern with respect to matters coming before the council that have budget impacts. So I met with him, I met with his chief of staff, we worked through this 
such that only those bills that have a de minimis impact on our budget are before us today. And two other measures that arguably have more impact will be dealt with in the context of the budget. But I want to thank the council president for working in a collegial manner with me and my staff to make sure that our council has an opportunity to honor Earth Day in this way, the best possible way. So thank you, Council President.